Hello everybody, today we're going to answer the question, what is the Banner Saga? The Banner Saga trilogy is coming to an end later this month with the release of the Banner Saga 3. This is one of those games that just passed me by, but with its recent addition to the Origin Access Vault and the Steam sale heavily discounting the games, I thought it was the perfect time to jump in and get caught up on the story. And in a certain sense, I'm very happy I waited. The game's tied together, your progress and choices continue from one game to the other, so you can now marathon the entire trilogy without having to wait years for the next release. So what is the Banner Saga? Well, first and foremost, the Banner Saga is a story-driven RPG with turn-based tactical combat. Now, there won't be any spoilers in this video, consider this a first impressions from my perspective, as I'm around 10 hours in, and I'm still relatively early on. Now, the story is set in a fictional world inspired by Viking and medieval culture. The game takes place just after a peculiar cosmological event takes place, where the sun has appeared to stop in the sky. It doesn't rise and it doesn't set, and it's resulted in a tumultuous and sudden winter. Humans and Varls, which are giant humanoid fe figures with horns, are in an unsteady alliance while they battle an invasion of Dredge, humanoid stone creatures. This then kicks off the third great war and you follow two separate parties of characters in different parts of the world as the story unfolds across multiple chapters. Now we'll take a look at some of the more RPG elements before we delve into the battle side of things. Your party will travel around the world to set locations across a vast world map. As far as I'm aware, this is always on rails, so to speak. You don't necessarily choose where you go or carve your own path. It's more determined by the story. Your party of characters typically accompanies a caravan of soldiers and you're in charge of managing their supplies, morale and numbers. As you're on your long marches between locations, you'll encounter some semi-random type events and dilemmas that pop up. Depending on your choices, it can lead to more battles, gaining or losing supplies, morale, or renown, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Now, when you run out of supplies, your people start starving and your numbers begin falling, and so too does morale. These have direct effects on battle and the battle difficulty later down the line. So just like any other event, you'll come across bands of dredge and be told their numbers and have a dilemma on how to approach that battle. This determines your starting deployment. A charge will have you sort of scattered all over the place, a strategic approach will have you potentially surround the enemy, and other options can cause you to be surrounded or separated on deployment. Now even though there's hundreds and thousands in a battle, you can still only fight with your party in a sort of micro battle within it. If your overall numbers are outnumbered, then your micro battle will be outnumbered too. If you fight and win, then you can fight extra amounts for better victories and higher morale. The caravan and its numbers are basically just there for both atmospheric flavor to the story and to determine how difficult your fights will be. Morale can be gained by resting and supplies can be bought at marketplaces for renown. Now renown, as I mentioned previously, is the only currency that you ever deal with and it's earned by fighting, winning and killing in battles and the occasional event dilemma. It's a universal currency used for upgrading everyone and for keeping the camp supplied. So that's pretty much the RPG side of the game. You don't take quests or missions, assign weapons or anything like that. Instead, you're doing fairly lightweight camp management and relatively simplistic stat upgrades to your characters. This is really just a means to facilitate the journey from location to location to further on the story. The story and cutscenes are the most RPG-like thing with branching dialogues and a few key decisions that shape the outcome of the story. So generally speaking, it is quite linear, but I don't think that's actually a bad thing. The story is still really interesting so far, and I feel like my choices have mattered at least somewhat. Some events can even see characters die or be acquired, so they can have a big impact on your game. Now the world building is also great, giving you just little bits of history here and there to flesh out your surroundings, but mostly focusing on the current events. So let's move on to the battle side of things. Battles, as mentioned, are turn-based and take place on a grid. There's a few distinct rules to how the battles play which make the Banner Saga's battles unique. The first is that each combatant's health is also their strength. I'm just gonna let that one sink in for a minute. Each combatant's health is also their strength. Now the second is that each combatant has a willpower currency kind of stat which you can spend on any action to improve it. The third is the unique abilities across different classes, whether it be pushing people over multiple tiles, lighting the ground on fire, causing hazards, attacking adjacent tiles, etc, etc. There's no shortage of unique little attacks per class to shake things up. Now all of this is placed around a dedicated turn order that states that it must be your go and then the enemies go and that's always the way it is and you always get to see who goes next. If the enemy is about to go next but you kill that guy, someone else will take that place, the guy that was next in line. So each combatant only has five stats total. You have armor, which is your protection from damage. 
You have strength, which is your damage and your health, as I mentioned before. You have willpower, which is your currency that you can spend to directly improve a stat on any turn. You have exertion, which is how much willpower you can spend in one turn. And you have break, which is the damage you'll do to armor. So to explain a simple situation, I moved my Varl up to attack this dredge. My Varl has a 16 strength and the dredge has 10 strength. Now remember that is his health and his attack. The dredge also has 8 armor, which absorbs attack. So my attack is 16 minus the 8 armor, which means I'll do 8 damage. Pretty simple. But I also have 5 willpower. So spending 2 willpower this turn will allow me to instantly kill this dredge. So it's super simple to follow. There's no hidden numbers or attack chances, terrain penalties, buffs or anything like that. It's all just about using what you've got against what they have and playing against the turn order. The only randomization that appears is if they have higher armor than your attack you'll be given a minus 10% odds for each number higher. So typically, you want to break down the armor first to avoid any random chances. So on this example, I know that the big dredge is going to go next, and he can do a lot of damage. So I made the decision to target him, because if I could bring even his strength down just by a little bit, his next attack won't be as bad against me. Now unfortunately though, because he had 12 armor, and I only had 9 attack, it meant that I had a 70% chance of hitting for just one damage. 12 minus 9 is 3, which is where you get the 30% error. So, I rolled the dice and spent 2 willpower to get 3 damage, but I missed the attack, the 70% failed. So I wasted willpower that I can't really get back for nothing. So it's just an example of a tactical decision I made using the turn order, where the 70% chance just didn't pay off. So with these rules, interesting strategies are born. For instance, I often bring an enemy's strength down to 1, so that they can take up a turn, but only do 1 damage no matter what. As far as I've played, there's no healing ability, so it seems like a pretty viable way to play. Other times, with special abilities, you can target strength directly, or adjacent tiles directly. The archer can light tar on fire in a 5 square shape, and anyone that walks over it gets burned, and it ignores armor, so it's extremely valuable at whittling down strong enemies. One of my virals can actually do direct damage, regardless of armor, to those nearby. These special attacks cost willpower, so there is, you know, it does require some proper timing. The last thing is also shape and positioning. A Varl, for instance, takes up four squares, whereas a human takes up just one. An archer can fire from a distance over allies, and a spearman can attack two tile ranges away and attack diagonally. So a few of these extra rules thrown in there do make for some very fun and interesting battles that feels like you're solving a lot of little mini puzzles in a way. Lastly, of course, the art style is just super pleasing to watch. The UI is simple to understand, it's just overall a pretty simple but very good strategy RPG so far, and I fully intend on finishing it to play the Banner Saga 2 and 3 when it comes out at the end of the month. So, I hope you enjoyed this quick first impressions on the Banner Saga, and hope you now know what it is. I'm almost 10 hours in, and I definitely recommend it so far. The game is also on mobile and on consoles, so it might be good for long journeys or just for lounging on the couch too. If I had a laptop or a Switch, this would be perfect for a flight that I have coming up soon. So let me know what you think about the Banner Saga in the comments below. If you like this video, then you're saving a puppy. Make sure you friend me on SoundCloud, like me on Bebo, and email me on Mixer. You know what to do. Alright, thanks again to the patrons for July, and previously this channel would have been gone a few months ago were it not for them, so the support is really needed and really appreciated from them. Also, a quick aside, I'm doing an AMA at the end of the month. If you have a question, check the top comment of this video and reply there or follow the link. The AMA won't be out for a little while, and we've got some good questions coming in already, so I appreciate people that are actually leaving replies or going to the link. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.